Well, hello, and welcome to Your Average Bear Gaming. I am George. Today, I want to work with Huge Minis again. That's the brand new uh, line of acrylics uh, put out by Huge Miniatures. They have some issues with uh, texture, and uh, they can be a little more difficult to use than uh, at least the paints that I've used in the past. Today, I'm going to try to fix that using some flow improver. Does it work? Let's find out, and we'll find out by painting Lord Inquisitor Draxus. It's got a dragon, so... Here is my Inquisitor. I've given her a Zenithal Prime, so it's mostly black, and then I, uh, Gave it a spritz of skeleton bone from Army Painter uh, out of a rattle can. The idea here is to give it a Zenithal Prime, but with something a little warmer than white. So, what am I going to do with this Inquisitor? Well, I know one thing. I am not going with black armor. I, paint, I painted way too many Death Watch Space Marines to want to do black armor again. I mean, someday. Not today. What I do want to accomplish, aside from painting this model, is really two things. The first of them is to work with uh, these acrylics from Huge Minis, or Huge Miniatures, sorry. Um, I've used them in the past, but I've had some kind of mixed results, and I'm determined to make these work. I want to give these the best chance possible to be good paints, uh, because they do have some uh, really interesting qualities. Um, but they have some drawbacks. They, they're, they're gunky, and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to give these another shot and see if I can't make them work. And, and mostly I'm going to use um, Flow Improver to hopefully get better results than I have been getting. The other thing that I want to work on is to work on my color selection. Now, one of the th tricks that I've seen uh, used to really amazing effect uh, is limiting the colors on your palette. It's a trick I've seen Jay from Eons of Battle use, um, and I don't know if it's a trick, it's a technique, right? Um, and his painting is, is amazing, and uh, I watch him mostly for entertainment value, but I figure I should probably learn a thing or two from him. Um, so I'm going to do what he has done and see if it works out for me. I've picked out three colors that I think look pretty neat together and use these and only these to paint my miniatures. Um, now I will probably do some washing. I don't count the I don't count the washes as the colors, but for my base coat at least, um, I'm gonna limit myself to these three colors and then vary the value of them using black and white. So mixing in white with, say, the teal um, should give me a lighter shade of teal. Mixing in some black with the same teal should give me a darker value of teal to kind of, you know, help me get some highlights and shadows. So that's the plan. I'm curious to see how this is going to work out. All right, here is the base coat. It looks kind of strange, but also kind of interesting. This is a color combination I've never used. Uh, I've never used purple much. I've never used teal, I think, at all. And I've never used pink at all. Um, and I think they look okay. Obviously, I've got some work to do still, but, you know, it's an interesting color choice. I'll stick with it and see uh, what uh, how this kind of shakes out. Um, so let's talk about how I got here. So uh, obviously I went with teal for the cape, uh, purple for the armor, and then pink for the inside of the cape. Um, and you'll notice the the uh, the dragon, this little bird thing that uh, the Inquisitor has on his arm. Uh, has kind of a similar color pattern, 
but it's inverted um, such that the armor is purple uh, or like the, the top part uh, of his body is purple uh, the inside of the wings is uh, teal and then his beak if you can kind of see right there that is a little bit of pink He's not going to stay this way. Uh, my intention is to kind of blend some of those colors together so th that it's a little bit more organic looking. But uh, the Inquisitor's armor is going to stay kind of looking like this, like the different colors will be uh, separated. Uh, obviously, I gave him a, a bone-colored helmet. And, and so it looks okay so far. Um, what I will say is, uh, so I'm working with these paints, uh, I, I mixed them up such that uh, I found them, you know, as easy to use as possible. And they do have some pretty good coverage, uh, except maybe the teal isn't as good. The way I prepared these is I, I put a little drop, um, well, a moderately moderate sized drop on my wet palette, and I added some flow improver and some water. The flow improver because I, I since it's clumpy, um, it, it's almost like a paste, like it should be in a tube rather than a bottle, um, and you know all the different colors seem to vary a little bit in that consistency, but there is a, a pastiness to it. Um, so I figured the flow improver would help things, and it, it has, um, but some of the colors require more flow improver than the others. Um, the teal, for example, needed a lot more, almost twice as much uh, flow improver um, than, uh, than the other colors in order for it to, to cover well um, and to flow well. But once I got it to work, it seems to be okay. Uh, it seems to cover well, and uh, since I'm, you know, using glazes, you can kind of see the uh, the shadows on the, uh, particularly on the purple. It's only got two coats, so yeah, it's interesting results. So it seems to be working so far, at least for the base coat. We'll see how it performs with the blending, but. So far, as long as you take some extra care with it, it seems to do a pretty decent job. With the washing step complete, we have a decent look at what our model, how our model is shaping up, and it looks pretty decent so far. The colors are kind of blending together a little better uh, than they were just a few minutes ago. Um, so uh, I did something, I don't know, I think interesting. For the uh, Inquisitor's armor, uh, I went ahead and washed it with some um, Citadel Colors Null Oil uh, to give it a nice dark kind of undertone. But the purple on the dragon's wings, uh, I didn't do that. I washed it with uh, Army Painter's purple tone it's a purple colored wash and so instead of being it like if instead of it, the the wings the dragon being darkened with black it's being darkened with kind of a darker version of that same purple um, kind of hoping to differentiate the, the two types of purple but I'll probably do more of that in the steps to follow but I figured that would be a nice base I did, um, I did do some washing with the cloth here, this teal. I went ahead and added a little bit of Army Painter's Blue Tone. Uh, so kind of deepened the teal a bit um, while leaving some of those creases a little darker. And I did the same thing with the underside of the dragon's wings. Um, I was going to try to differentiate them, but I wasn't quite sure how to pull that off, so I just went with the same color. Um, I guess I could have gone with a purple tone there or something like that, but you know, I do intend to do some blending on the dragon's wings, so maybe that won't be such a big deal. Um, besides, as you can see, the, the uh, wash was fairly subtle um, on that model, or you know, with the blue. Um, 
with the pink, I did something similar. I went with uh, Army Painter's Red Tone. Uh, it kind of deepened and darkened the pink just a little bit. Citadel Colors shade of Soul Blight Gray. It's, um, it's a common way for people to uh, kind of add shadows to white armor. Um, and so I'm trying it here. I've tried it before and it hasn't worked all that well. But it's worked better than other things that I've tried, so I'm gonna give it another shot here. Uh, and finally, for the um, the skull on the pauldron there, uh, I added a little bit of Army Painter's Mid Brown. Uh, it's another shade. Uh, it's darker. It's kind of in the middle of the brown shades, uh, but not quite as black as Agrax Earth Shade. It's a little warmer, I think, than Agrax Earth Shade. So I went with that right there. So it's looking okay so far, but now it's time for the next step, which is to add some detail. In the detailing phase, one of the first things I did was to work on some of the blending. And this isn't part of the traditional kind of quick paint process that I typically engage in, but it's a skill that I want to develop. Um, it, it can have dramatic effects on how your model looks. Uh, you know, it helps you add highlights and it helps you make other colors uh, a lot more interesting or other parts of the model more interesting. And so I spent some time um, adding highlights. And so for like on the purple parts of the model, I added um, kind of lighter purple on top and you know, kind of the top surfaces of uh, you know areas of the armor where light would, would be hitting. So kind of the top of one of the legs, some of the breastplate, uh, things like that. I added a, a bit of uh, kind of some edge highlights on the top parts of the model of the armor anyway. Um, and I spent some attention uh, on the cape, kind of doing the same thing with, uh, you know, colors that I'm using there. So for the teal, I just added a bit of white to my t to the teal color that I had on my palette and um, applied uh, that lighter shade on parts uh, that I was highlighting. And one of the things that I realized is that it wasn't looking really good and so I thought I would give it texture. So I did kind of a kind of a stitching so not quite not quite stippling, but think of it as stippling, but with stripes. So very, just very tiny little stripes, almost like scratches um, on those areas I was uh, adding those extra layers of color. Um, and so I did that a number of times, uh, adding a bit more white to the um, color I was highlighting. Uh, and the results are not great, but they're interesting, I think. Uh, you can see where the highlights are. Uh, I don't know if they're going to look okay in kind of when I take pictures of this model, but um, from kind of far away, from, you know, like a foot or two away, it looks interesting. It looks like highlights, like I see pros do. When you get a little closer, it looks, you can, you can see what the brush strokes were, and um, yeah, I don't know. Clearly, I need some more practice. Uh, more details. <laughs> um, I uh, went ahead and did some dry brushing on the uh, the skull pauldron, just to kind of um, tone down the, the the wash that was there and bring back some of the the, the skeleton bone color. Uh, I also did some blending on the little pet dragon, um, and so uh, the top parts of the wings uh, were purple, but I went back and added some teal, uh, almost like having the teal be the highlight, sort of, not entirely, but sort of, um, to kind of give the impression of iridescence. Um, and in the underside of the wings, I added a, a little purple kind of to serve as my shadow. Uh, it looks interesting, uh, maybe a little, mm, I don't know if sloppy is the right word. I need some work with it, but I, I did want to, to give that a try. Uh, other details, I just went in and, and filled in the, the grenade, made that a, an interesting red color with a silver kind of the, the spoon that triggers the grenade. Um, on the shirt and catapult, I added kind of a stripe of yellow uh, to kind of 
suggest that it came from the Ilyandin craft world, and Ilyandin is a craft world that I'm collecting. So, um, so there's that. I uh, added just a little bit of metal. Uh, there's a little skull on the belt buckle um, and on the backpack. A little, little bit of, uh, of red on one of the wires that was uh, that are reaching into the uh, uh, into the power the power fist. So yeah, there was not a ton of detail on the model, but just enough to make it look interesting um, and to keep the keep the model keep the project simple and short and sweet. I enjoyed that part. is my Inquisitor. Uh, yeah, he looks kind of interesting. I... You know, I've never played with these colors uh, much. Uh, certainly never in combination or to this degree. And the results are interesting. Um, I, you know, if I had to do this again, I'm not sure that I would go for a dragon with colors that kind of mimicked the armor. Uh, I think next time we'll try to, to contrast the familiar. Um, so maybe like a bright red or an orange or something like that. Because uh, it kind of blends in, which was the my intent, but maybe a little too much. I don't know. Uh, as for the blending, yeah, I spent some time blending uh, and... Uh, you know, to, to a moderate amount of success. You know, from a distance here, you can kind of see the highlights on the leg armor um, and on the cape, which was kind of what we're looking for. But as you get a little closer, you can kind of see the, the brush strokes. And so I need to work on making this uh, a, a better blend, a smoother blend. But, you know, for, for one of my early, uh, early attempts at this, not bad. Uh, I will say I don't. I didn't need to do the blending, um, but I think it adds a little bit of character to the model that wouldn't necessarily be there um, without it. Uh, so you can do this model with the normal quick paint without the blending, uh, but if you have some time or you want to experiment with it, I think it's a good use of time, particularly in a model like this where you just have the one and it's not very big, um, and you know it's unique. Yeah, if you can, uh, if you can. Spare the time, uh, do some experimenting with it, and uh, especially since you don't have to feel this guy. There's no one running an Inquisitor army. Maybe he'll join uh, another one of your armies, but you know, there's not as much pressure to you know make this uniform to to have it blend in seamlessly with your existing army. Uh, so if you're ever going to experiment, this is uh, a model like this is the uh, is the time to do it. I almost forgot to talk about the actual paints. Um, and so it looks like adding a little bit of uh, flow improver does help the consistency uh, of the paints quite a bit. Uh, they're not as chunky, pasty, gritty. Um, but you're going to have to add a lot of them and mix them up, you know, pretty good. So it makes them. Not difficult, but it makes them uh, a bit more work to use, if that makes any sense. And so the coverage is fine, but you kind of have to thin them out enough um, that it kind of cancels out uh, some of the advantages that these paints offer in terms of coverage. So it's kind of a wash. And honestly, the coverage isn't that much better to justify kind of the extra work that you have to do to make these paints perform. So I don't know. Um, I I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards meh on these huge minis, which is a shame. I really really wanted to like them. All they had to do is be better than my current setup, which is Army Painter. Um, so I'll probably use them a little bit more, but. I don't know. My, I, I don't have high hopes. Uh, I certainly don't anticipate buying any more of these. Um, the, the, just the, the value isn't there. They would have to be significantly cheaper uh, for uh, me to justify a recommendation or even fu future purchases for myself. Um, but I am glad that I took a, 
took a look, right? I, I really, uh, I, I took a risk, bought some paints uh, that I hadn't used before, tried them out, and so now I know. Mm. You know, and so I have a better sense, a better appreciation, really, for Armory Painter. But it does not get me thinking that maybe I should experiment with more paints. Maybe there's something better out there, right? So these aren't the better ones. Uh, Army Painter is a good default, but maybe there's better. And so I'll, I'll keep looking. Uh, since everyone uh, in the Warhammer 40k uh, painting community seems to think that uh, Vallejo is is kind of a pretty solid paint, that's probably my next purchase. Looking forward to that. So that was it. A quick little project uh, to kind of cleanse my palette from doing big monster robots uh, that require magnetization and a big old paint job. Uh, it was nice, short, and sweet, uh, and I'm looking forward to doing more of these. Thanks very much for watching this video. I kept it short. Um, I'm hoping to inspire you to tackle a project that, uh, that you maybe have sitting on your shelf that doesn't have anything to do uh, with your armies. Maybe just just paint to paint something cool, uh, experiment, push your boundaries, uh, get out of your comfort zone, and try something interesting and new. Um, you might find that uh, you learn something that you can apply to make your other painting even better. Have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other. Peace.